uh, that literally weighs uh, four or five ounces. Uh, how do you how do you machine something like that? How do you um, fabricate uh, cheaply? So you'd probably need to start investing in your garage and some small uh, CNC tools and and uh, get very skilled mechanical.
So ISS is it. You, you know, we can't, if NASA can't make something useful of its part of ISS, NASA's out of the manned space business. Well, how, how likely is thing. that at this point? Which, I mean, because we've talked about how, you know, now it's a, a national laboratory, um, the plan is to, to fund it through 2020. Um, there, there's been talk, at least, about in once we get to 2020, basically handing it off to to somebody to, to the thing is, it. if NASA doesn't own it, NASA is the U.S. lead in an international program, and it's the lead negotiator with the Russians for the Japanese and the Europeans. But it's not even a NASA facility; it's an international facility. Yeah, NASA can abandon it, but there. I, I don't know what happens in a ship if the captain gets roaring drunk and then there's a storm that requires competent action. There's got to be some rules about constructive abandonment and, you know, if the crew's, you know, the first officer has to take over and it's legally, you know, it's not mutiny. When the last shuttle retire, it flies, and NASA has no way to get itself to station for several years, one could argue that the captain's drunk and the rest of the crew has to take over, and the NASA has constructively abandoned the space station. That could happen within a year. And that might be the best thing for it because NASA believes less in the ISS than anybody else on the planet. Mm -hmm. What about Vazimir? Excuse about, me? Talk about Vazimir yet? No. Using Vazimir to put it into a different orbit? Vazimir just takes a lot of power to provide a small amount of thrust, and there are various other ways of doing it. Vazimir. The reason it makes sense to fly that in the station is that station's got big batteries and you can fly this for brief periods at very high power levels. But Vasimir isn't the long-term solution. Okay, And keeping it in orbit is much less of an issue than keeping the supplies going to keep the people alive and doing useful things. And to my mind, the biggest thing that will make ISS useful is you can do exploratory research on an intermittent basis. But if you want commercially viable, useful research, it has to be iterative and it needs to have flights, flight frequencies of about once a month on a sustained basis. And if once you get the drug companies and other companies believing that this is actually occurring, okay, it's after it starts occurring, you'll actually start to get commercially viable research. It really doesn't matter whether it occurs in the space station or Bigelow module because they're going to end up flying together. It, we're having trouble. The biggest problem with ISS is we can't get them frequently. How sensible would it be for Bigelow to go to a different orbit? <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we got seven billion people on this planet, and at most we can support one such facility. Okay, the Chinese and Bigelow and NASA are all going to make nice because they have to. Otherwise, nobody's going to get any useful out of their facility. So, if we can actually get to a point where on a sustained basis, we've got people going and supplies going to and from station at least monthly for a couple of years. I think ISS is going to be a runaway success. But I don't think anybody in the program believes that. So the question is, how do you con people into trying it for a couple of years to find out? Okay, that's the big problem. There, nobody can know. I'm guessing. I'm optimistic. But nobody can know this. Is there a solution to make that easier with a tether? Is there cheaper to make it with a tether? The problem with tethers and ISS is whenever I approach the space station. I've given up. I, there are things one can do, but one has to Parts of NASA were starting to realize that. But useful things, tethers and not, there are useful things. Makeup. Okay. But 
I don't expect to sell that until I sell it. Hydrogen gas gun? Um, I'm familiar with it. It's in a variety of schemes. And in fact, 20 years ago, there used to be a place in town. Yeah. Yeah. Out of it, business. If you can't find it, it's gone. It's gone. Lost. It's gone. Well, um, <laughs> I went there 20 years ago. The topology of the west side of Chimborazo, the mountain that's on the equator just outside Quito, Ecuador. If you were going to do a light gas gun to launch things into orbit, that's the best place in the world. Because of the altitude? Well, he said no, the was... altitude and the fact that it's right on the equator, and it's it's the only place that's on the equator right next to a major airport, very high altitude, in the thing is that for space station And the only way it would be reasonable for them to give permission would be for the, a U.S. entity to talk the U.S. government into having the object re-registered as a U.S. object. But then the U.S. government... It's a, von Braun said that we can beat gravity it's killing us. Um, that's true here. But there's stuff up there but the diplomatic issues, and it's not saying the Russians are bad guys, the U.S. government is bad guy. Diplomatic complications are the main problem. You know, I, I think figuring out how to the mass, 99% of the mass is way more than we do. Okay? It's not little bits and pieces. Most of the objects are small, but most of the mass is in car-sized objects. See, that's all great raw materials right there. And if you don't have to get into orbit because you already paid to get it up there already, that's what I think you have Over, yeah, over half of it is probably aluminum alloys. If you can figure out how to recycle beer cans in orbit, you could be in business. It only takes electricity. Aluminum only takes electricity to, to turn it into whatever you want. Like put it in a forge, you, you close do you know down, how much, put electrodes in. Do you, do you know how much more power costs... There's lots of things you can do. It's a thousand times more expensive. What, in orbit. What's this now? A thousand times. It costs a hundred dollars a kilowatt hour for power in orbit, and it costs ten cents a kilowatt hour if you buy from this a year. I mean, all the ideas of collecting power in space show the efficiency of that, right? Okay, the, 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 I don't know what the folks that are into that are smoking, but I'd really like some of it. <laughs> I'd say you put a nuclear reactor. Yeah, but see, you, you're underestimating the actual cost. You know, you're talking about cold fire power no. plants. You're talking about all the, all the no, free I, sort if of you costs double that are not it, encountered in the actual it, coal and the power plant building itself. I, okay. You're, 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 if you do it in a sustainable manner, you may double or triple the cost, but that leaves you with a factor of 30, uh, 300 to 500 difference between... Well, because of the cost of getting stuff up into space. Yeah. But if you were to go into space, use the raw materials from space, and build it in space, it wouldn't be... It, it wouldn't be a factor of 1,000, but I bet it would still be well over a factor of 10. Well, but the thing is... When we get better at doing stuff in space on a day-in, day-out basis, most of the power you generate in space, you'll be able to sell in space more than you can sell on the ground. So I don't think beaming power down is going to make sense because it won't be the best market for that power. We're out of time for our little chat. It's almost 3 o'clock. Thank you very much. But I, I, 
know that we are not paying everything we should for the power we're using. But again, I don't think I, I'm involved in the uh, novel windmill. I think that charging provides near baseload power equivalent for, and that has its own environmental costs. Well, in terms of uh, this, 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 no, this particular, this particular design is almost immune from that. Oh, it's immune from that. Is that okay? So, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, what is, yeah, uh, now it's perfect. It's a flying windmill that flies at high altitude. I don't know if anybody will show up. Birds running in the cage will be the only problem. Uh, we're going to find oh, out. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go see some of these guys. Out of, 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 out so it's not tethered. It's, anyway. it's, it's tethered. Oh, it is it's tethered. A, oh, okay. It's a tethered auto jet. It's, it's an it's auto jet flying like, like a kite. So out of uh, the jet stream or something. Uh, well, that. in the summer you fly in the jet stream, and in the winter you fly lower altitudes because you don't get enough power. Right. 